So in the previous video that I have shown on the mail automation, I have left you with small question, right? So whenever you don't get a process running because of some of the settings that you have to do to automate the Gmail. So here I'm going to do tell you what are those steps. So the first and the foremost step is firstly, just go into your Google and click on the settings. Sorry, Gmail, click on the settings. So once after you see all the settings, you will be landed on to this page. Let me just show you from the beginning. So this is the page, right? So I'm just clicking on this. See all settings. So once after you click there, you can see something called forwarding and POP or IMAP. Just click on that. Just make sure that you enable the IMAP. Click on enable IMAP and click on save changes. So the first setting that you should do is enable your IMAP from your Gmail account. So once after that's done, if at all you have a two-step verification enabled for your Gmail, then uh, you have to do one more step. Otherwise, this will be sufficient. So if you have a two-step verification enabled, then these are the things that you need to follow. So sign in with app password. So I will give you um, the link for this particular account. Uh, for this particular Google account page so that you can just keep it handy and follow whenever you have you have some questions or confusion regarding this. So I will leave this particular link in the description. So what you have to do now is if you have a two-step verification turned on for your Gmail account, what you have to do, you have to create and use the app password. So whatever the password that we were using here currently, it's the Gmail password, right? Instead of the Gmail password, you have to create an app password and that app password should be used to log in into your Gmail account while you're automating through any third party tool, okay? So how you can create that app password that I'm going to show you now. So go to your Google account. So just click on here. It will take you to your Google account. So this is your Google account. So after that, go to security. And here in the security, if you see, you can sign into Google using a app password, right? Just click on that particular one and it will ask you to enter uh, with your mail ID and the password. That's done. So once after that is done, you can see here I have already set one app password. Okay, so you can see uh, I have already created one. But if you haven't created one, then you should follow these steps. You should select your app and select the device. Just click on here and give a custom name. And you can just give whatever the name you wanted to select like uh, Gmail um password for third party tool or for ui path tool okay gmail automate you can give something of that sort and then click on generate so once after you click on generate it will provide you a 16 character password just copy this and what all you have to do is you have to use this in your application so how you can use that just copy that and go to your um get imap mail message and just paste it the password over here or you can just paste it here and use this particular variable though so that that is very simple right so this is how you can generate and use the app password and uh, what you have to do you just save it just uh, click on done and that particular password will be saved into your um, machine so just like how i have done here so let me just delete it so this is how I have created one app password for my uh, mail for automating my Gmail. Okay. So in the same way, you can also create and use it. So once after that's done, it's good. Now I have actually pasted my 16 digit uh, password here. So it's a one time generated. Okay. So you don't have to remember You just save it into your uh, Google account just like how I have shown you just save it and you can keep it uh, 
with you wherever the application you wanted to use it for the automation so um make sure that uh, you don't lose it okay so once after that's done uh this i i have pasted this over here right so now let's execute this workflow and see how this actually works if it is throwing any error or if it's working properly so i'm going to debug this workflow So it is getting executed, right? It is taking some time because uh, it is running in the debug mode. So it is taking a little bit. Let me just uh, put a fast uh, so that we can see what's happening in the process. Okay, so yeah, here uh, it has it has taken all the mail messages. So firstly, let's see how many mails that we have in the list of the mails. So, okay, I will take the count. Okay, so it shows 30 because if you see here, I have fetched uh, the first 30 mails, right? The top 30 I have taken, which are 100. And here I'm going to take the subject. So first is security alert because the just now I have logged in and, uh, you know, changed all the password and all. So I got a mail from the Google with the subject security alert. So here, if you see, I'm printing mail dot subject. So the other one is also same and some other knockery job street dot com uh, message and then some work from home message, language uh, learning idea, voting. <clears throat> <clears throat> and the UI path her, uh, error message from the orchestrator. So these are the different okay things that I'm getting uh, when I get the subject. Okay, so this is how you can actually retrieve the list of the mails uh, from a Gmail using get iMac mail messages activities and you can uh, you know print the subject and you can get the subject so basically how we will uh, how we can use this piece into automation generally if you wanted to retrieve a particular mail with certain subject then how you can do so if you see here I'm having a uh, you know uh, security alert okay so well, let's say security alert is something crucial okay so let's say uh, for all this if i'm checking uh, so okay instead of if what i'm going to do i'm going to take an assign activity so i have spoke about the ternary operator in one of my videos just go and check it so i'm going to use it use that particular uh, ternary operator with VB scripting over here. So that is very much useful instead of using multiple nested if uh, into our workflows. So I'm going to use that here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a variable which is str and uh, high alert, okay? High alert variable. So whenever there's a security alert, I'm going to give this particular thing and I'm going to understand that there's a security alert for my particular Gmail, okay? So I'm going to check. Uh, okay, let me take here set value. If mail dot subject um, dot contains so if the if the subject contains something like security alert then what i'm going to do i'm going to uh, give a value okay this is a, about ternary operator if you don't know how to write it i will uh, link the video here on the top right so you can just check out that video as well uh, and it will give you very good understanding. Okay, so security alert. Uh, I can say hi alert. Need to check the login. Okay. Else. Everything seems fine. Okay. So this is something that I wanted to check if there is any high alert or not okay so what i'm going to do i'm just going to just uh, print that str high alert 
so as we know that it is going to read only 100 messages right but now um only 100 messages but it didn't mark as red when it has read previously it didn't mark as red so what i'm going to do i'm going to mark as red so now whatever the messages that it picks it's gonna mark and next time those messages will not be considered because it's the those are already read so it's gonna compile and I think I have kept a slow step and now we can see where the process is actually running. So process is here. Okay. So it's trying to fetch the IMAC messages. So it's going to take a little while because we are executing in the debug mode and also it's a uh, IMAP that's going to uh, usually when fetching it will take longer time because here it has to do authentication and everything and then it has to fetch. So once it's done, it will come over here and we can see. The sign activity. We can just yes. The operation has timed out. So usually we can see these kind of uh, errors encountering. So what we can do during that time, we can just make sure that we limit the um, you know input for this, or we can either increase the timeout. So here you can see the timeout is there, right? So I can just keep it to. 60 seconds that's one minute into two okay like that i can just keep and instead of 30 we don't actually need 30 right just skip two just for our convenience so just make sure you do like that because um that will reduce the load to that particular activity and also whenever you're working on this uh, going forward we, we can filter it out and we can send the only uh so that the mail can only pick certain uh, messages so like how I have reduced it to two and in the same way we can just apply a filter where you don't have to search for all the you know mails okay so now the load has reduced right so here if you see uh, what is the mail dot subject okay this is different it has or it has changed okay so now it has to show me it's not everything seems fine okay and the second one what's the mail load subject let's check okay top priority so everything seems fine so let's uh pick something which is high alert uh let's go to the gmail and do some editing there okay mm. this is my gmail Okay, it will take me to that uh, particular thing only. Let me go to my Gmail. I will. Okay, these were already read. Okay, so that's why it has uh, not shown like that. And what can I do is. If I have, I, I don't know where to change this as unread, uh, mark as unread. So, okay, it's marked as unread. Okay, so now I will just run this workflow and we will see if that condition is satisfying. Okay. So, if you see now the time taken by the get time app is little. Um, slow like it's it's reduced when compared to earlier because the load has been reduced from 30 to 2 okay so now let's check the mail dot subject okay security alert because we have kept it as unread it's gonna pick only 100 messages so let's say if you don't know how to do that you can just do one more trick also which is uh inside this particular get imap instead of picking only 100 messages you can pick uh you can just keep it as um unchecked so that it will take all the messages so oh security alert it contains security alert but it is still showing um security alert okay maybe the case sensitivity here okay let me just change this because this kind of things actually helps us to learn more concepts so if you see here i have kept security and a capital e and you can see this has uh, 
just a second my speaker is having some issue okay so now uh, you instead of changing there in the gmail you can just keep it uh, constant over there and just change here okay so it's gonna pick everything which is red and which is unread also so this is the last time we are running it and we are going to check the one last condition which is um a security alert a high alert or not okay so just step into so high alert need to check the login okay so this is how we can actually do small um, you know actions in the gmail so this is regarding the getting gmail uh, from a particular getting mails from a gmail account okay so going forward we will see how we can use smtp and how we can send the mails how we can save the attachments and what are the different activities that we can perform how we what all we have to do like you know how, how we can at attach the um, document inside a particular uh, send smtp mail message and how we can send a bulk messages like whenever there's a situation like let's say we can take a use case like hr um hr use case okay so let's say if a hr has to send multiple offer letters to so many people that are coming in for an interview so let's say in a daily basis if five to ten people got selected instead of sitting and manu uh, you know changing everything in a pdf and sending out the offer letter to the uh, you know department people what the HR can do, HR can automate everything, right? All the details that are there in Excel, that everything has to be changed in a PDF and the PDF has to be attached in the mail and that has to be sent or uh, rolled over to everyone who has got selected. So this is why it's simple. I will tell, uh, talk about this use case in the future videos. So these were the basics of the Gmail automation that we have seen right now. And do not miss any of those videos please do subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you'll get the video as soon as i apply it, upload it and if you find this video useful please give a thumbs up and that gives me a lot of motivation and i'll that pushes me to come up with more interesting stuff thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video